Uh, let's go fiber. Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Sorry for being away for a wee bit. I celebrated my two-year anniversary with my wife, so boo, 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 pictures, that's cool. No regrets. You know, sometimes taking even two days of break and not even touching code can do wonders, so... We're back, fully on track, new setup as well. Hope you like this. I love it. We had a depressing wall previously, but now we have art and plants. Cool. Look, I changed my wallpaper too. So I just want to show you kind of how I reason about what kind of tech stack I pick, depending what kind of project I make. Uh, so yeah, let's let's have a look, shall we? Okay, so let's start off quite basic. Uh, you have a client coming up to you and they want a static website. Like, let's say you have a photographer coming up to you and he's like a wildlife photographer taking pictures of foxes and shit. And he's like, I want to make a website where I can show off my pictures. I want people to be able to contact me and book me, right? So that's quite basic. Um, so in, in that situation, most of the site would be quite static and maybe you have certain elements that are interactive like a carousel for the pictures, you might have a form uh, for the contact or you might have a bit of JavaScript to make like a booking appointment. So for something like that where it's mostly static, I I'm going for Astro now and I also have a tutorial coming up like tomorrow or the next day on Astro. Not sure what I'm building out yet with it but it's gonna come soon so subscribe now. Um, Okay, so what Astro allows you to do is essentially create a multi-page multi application where most of your content is static. So you could have like your nav bar here uh, that just has like the links on it. So I'll just put this up here. Uh, I'll color it dark, All right? So you have your nav, uh, which is static, and then you could have some content here uh, that is also static. Something like that. Let's say you like have a hero nav. And down here you might have a wee carousel. Now what you can do with Astro is pretty much render everything out static and by default it's gonna run no JavaScript for you. However, you can create these uh, interactive components using any framework you want. So I, I could pick like Svelte here or I could pick React or whatever, right? And this could be my React carousel. And what I like about Astro is that it also gives you the flexibility when to load this content up. So you can imagine this like interactive carousel uh, is maybe a bit more on the bottom of the screen, right? So maybe it's out of frame. So when you initially visit the website, it's gonna literally load zero JavaScript for you. So you have you have the functionality in Astro to basically load up the JavaScript as soon as it gets into your view. Uh, I believe it uses like intersection observer or whatever, but um, yeah, that's gonna make your website look really quick. But you also have the interactivity uh, when you need it, which is really cool. And it's super simple as well. So that's why I like Astro a lot. Um, and yeah, I'll just stick to this. And if I wanna add like a form or something, I could use like Netlify's forms uh, just to integrate that as well. So I'm not going out of my way to just build out an app or like a Node.js app just to have forms. I believe their free tier offering is quite nice anyway. So if I build out a site like Astro, I also, I'm probably gonna host it on something like Netlify. Uh, let's, let's have a look at the pricing really quickly. Uh, I do believe they give you like a couple of hundred of form submissions uh, per month, which is fantastic. And then you can, of course, pay for the pro and then you get l plenty. Now, if I'm building out something more complex, uh, let's say my course platform. So that's gonna be remade this year as well, because this is a tragedy. I still regret that I went for Teachable. Uh, they are horrendous, uh, just for the simple fact that it, it, it's just horrible in terms of performance and the amount of things that they load up uh, is just a bit ridiculous and the size as well. So if we run a network test here, let me just go here quickly. Uh, boom, 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 run this. Ah, that's, that's, that's quite a lot for, I mean, what it is here, but they won't allow you to really customize it as well unless you pay a ridiculous amount. I think it's like five grand a year just so you can write some CSS. Uh, I, I just don't like it. And like this as well, like as you, as you see on mobile, right? Come on, man, that, that doesn't look good at all. 
Uh, unfortunately, I'm still stuck with them, but again, this year I'll make my own platform and I'll just move all, all the courses over. Um, so that's that's gonna be great. But how am I gonna build this out, for example? Uh, well, in this case, there's like loads of interactivity, right? We have a user that we're checking on every page. We have payments. Uh, yeah, we have loads of interactivity and data being sent uh, to the server and back, right? So what I'm going to use is quite similar to the my latest course that I released. Uh, so I'm going to be using Next13 as my default. Uh, that's my meta framework of choice. Uh, it's just because I've pretty much worked with React for years and years. If I had to pick another one, I'd probably go with Svelte. I am playing with both at the same time. I'm not picking one or the other. I usually play with two or three at the same time. So now I'm I'm kind of playing with Next, a bit with Svelte and Svelte Kit, and I'm also looking into Solid as well. But I'm still waiting on that till it matures a little bit. But that's a really interesting one as well. But for now, like remaking my own platform, that's going to be using Next. I mean, you have the server components now, which are fantastic. And yeah, it's just it's just so easy now to just create a couple of API routes, route handlers, whatever they're called these days. Um, and yeah, just get up and running really quickly. And for the state management, what I use is 10, stacks, uh, 10 stack query. So the way this works is, so I have some sort of database somewhere, right? So this is my next, next 13 app. Cool. All right. So all my data is coming from like some sort of database here. Whether it's a user, whether it's uh, their purchases or anything I'm sending through to my front end right here, right? So this travels from here to here and this is going to render out whatever, a course that you purchased. Um, what I'm using to manage all the state here is 10 stack query. So I'm prefetching the data from my database and I'm prefetching it in a server component and then I'm hydrating it on the client afterwards. And the nice thing about this is that it's after you have your data here, you can cache it, you can play with it, you can move around with it, and you just have that wonderful uh, control of uh, you know when you want to cache certain things, when you want to do optimistic updates. Um, it just gives you a great, great control over how you manage your data in your app. But you might be wondering, what if you want to do something like, you know, you have a cart maybe up here and you just want to like increment the number from like one to two and three and four, right? That, I mean, you're not going to save like the carts, like how, how much, how many courses a user has in their cart, right? It would be a shame to just keep making API requests back to the server and back just to update a simple number. Uh, whereas, you know, like if you're messing with the user or you're messing with a purchase or stuff like that, that needs to, that needs to go to your database and back. Uh, but again, like a simple increment to counter or what kind of items I have in my, in my cart, you, I think it's it would be pointless to make requests for that. So for that, for like client side um, state management, I'd use something like Zustand because it's so simple and it follows that like signal model as well. Um, and, and you can set it up in like two two minutes literally, and you have type safety as well, which is fantastic. So basically. 10 stack query for any server state management and then Zustan for any client side management. Uh, when it comes to the, the database, I'm just, I'm just using Postgres now, to be honest. I initially really got into Firebase, but Jesus Christ, I moved off of it. Uh, fire shit don't kill me. Please don't kill me. He's gonna block me after this. Uh, but what I moved to is Railway now. I really like it because it's so simple to just, in a couple of clicks, literally two clicks, boom, you can provision a PostgreSQL and you are good to go. Uh, and then I hook this up pretty much to Prisma these days. I know there's like drizzle out there and everything, but I still like Prisma. You know, uh, the DX is just fantastic. Uh, 
and I got really fast these days, so I really don't mind that too much. And yeah, I mean, if I decide to even like plug out my Postgres and plug in MongoDB, you can still do that with Prisma. Do they support it? I believe they still support it. And now they have like Accelerate and Pulse coming out, which is fantastic. Hi! <laughs> Here he is. Now for off, I use Cleric. I fully switched over to Cleric. Uh, it's so fast and it's so easy to set up. And you have these fantastic components that you can just quickly set up. So as you can see like this, like I click here, right? Manage account, look how pretty this looks. This is literally just like importing a component and and yeah, in React, you just import sign, sign in button, not button, user button or something like that. And boom, you have this super nice looking um, dashboard here. So I like Cleric. Uh, I like it that it's, it's super easy to just get up and running on the edge. Uh, the speed, you know, I got with this is fantastic. To like fetch a user, it's been under like 50 milliseconds. Uh, so I was on next off before, but to be honest, um, I much prefer Cleric and I don't mind that it's paid as well. And I don't even mind that the users are hosted here because at the end of the day, you can still save a reference in your database and then just fetch that. Uh, so yeah, go for it. I think the free tier allows you to have up to 5,000 users. Uh, I mean, if you have more than 5,000 anyway, you, you're gonna afford 10, 20 dollars per month. So I really, really enjoy it. Now for styling, I'm gonna fully... Now for styling, I'm just gonna stick to Tailwind CSS to be honest. It's just so easy to build up your own design system around it, uh, which is what I love about it, right? You can go in your Tailwind config, you can set up your own colors, you can set up your own fonts and everything, and then boom, 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 you just start adding it. And yeah, it's that simple. Uh, I also started looking into Shade CDN, Shad, Shad CDN, uh, and they provide like amazing different components that you're gonna use, uh, you know, quite regularly in web applications. Like a, I don't know, like a checkbox, right? Like a cool date picker, like a what else do they have? Like an input, right? A progress bar or like a table. They just have a really, really nice. Uh, these really nice components all ready to go for you. So I do enjoy this. I haven't really messed around too much with this, but I do want to make a tutorial and just kind of play with it. Uh, for payments, now here's kind of where I'm, um, I don't know, payments were quite difficult. Uh, I know Stripe is the most recommended one and that's kind of what I used in my tutorials as well uh, because the docs are just amazing and there's so much information about it online. But the thing for me is, Oh man, I don't want to handle any tax, tax related issues. Uh, so you have stuff like Lemon Squeezy and what's the other one called? Paddle? And what they do is they act like basically like a merchant of records. So they take the money and then they pay you. But the nice thing about that is that they take care of any tax tax problem so you don't have to worry about that. So they do take like 3 or 5% but then you are clear, right? The thing though is, oh man, they don't e they don't even have like a JavaScript library package unfortunately. So you're kind of stuck, you know, exploring their their API which is not as comp not even close to being as comprehensive as Stripe's. Uh, Stripe is 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 ahead by a mile. But I might be forced, like when I'm making my own platform, to use something like Lemon Squeezy, just so I don't have to deal with with that stuff. So we'll see how it goes. Now, for if I want to do like an Express app, right? So if you're building an X13 app, this is kind of like a whole monolith, right? You have your front end code, you have your server components here, but you also have your route handlers. So basically, all your APIs are, are just living in here, right? Whether it's like fetching a user, blah, blah, blah. It's all in this one, right? But what if you want to make a, you know, just like an express server, right? So you want to just have your APIs here and that's it. All right, boop, boop, boop. Quick, quick, look at that. Look at that speed. There we go, right? So you have just an express app. And then the, the benefit of this is you can just hook it up to any front end, right? 
So for that, I don't know, I still, I don't mind DigitalOcean too much. Uh, it is taking a while, you know, to set up a VPS and you know, you have the SSH in there and then set up your Ubuntu and, you know, all your NGX and all that shit, but it is fun. I like it. I don't mind it too much. Um, I like the ability to customize and configure anything to my own needs. And I mean, you can set up everything, right? If you have your own Wii server, you can set up uh, HTTPS, you can set up HTTP2. Uh, yeah, you, you, it's your server. You can do whatever you want with it. I, I know some people have talked about render. Uh, I think it's much easier to set up a, an Express app up there or just a Node app. So I'm going to have to look into this uh, and see how it goes. I'll definitely give this a shot too. It's something I haven't tried before. Um, but yeah, Vercel obviously for, for your Next.js app. Um, they have storage here. So they, they, do, they do so much now. They have so edge functions, right? You have uh, blobs, you have a Postgres database, KV, loads of shite. <laughs> uh, what else am I missing? Oh yeah, for design stuff. See, I don't know. I don't know, man. Are we sticking with Figma? Are we moving to XD? What's the Adobe situation like? Are they gonna kill off Figma? No clue. Absolutely no clue. I guess we're going to have to wait and see. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, that's like the base uh, stack that I want to explore now. For the future, what do I want to do? I definitely want to look into creating a library. Yeah, I feel like that's something that I haven't done before. And I feel quite embarrassed about it. I don't know why. I was like, I haven't really contributed. Like, I really wanted to contribute to like a nice library to open source. So I've been thinking of putting together an animation library. Oh, I also forgot TypeScript. TypeScript all the way. That's really good. And also a low level programming language. I'm not sure why yet. Let me know if you have any recommendations. Should we go for Rust? Should we go for something else? Not sure, but I'll gladly make a couple of videos about it. All right, that's gonna be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my courses down below. Um, does that look cool?